Today we are going to continue going over some basic self-defense and Hapkido techniques. What we're going to learn in this video is the actual front roll. Now, before you can do the actual front roll, you have to be able to do some very basic falls. And if you want to know how to do these, and I've put a link in the description below. So go check them out. Now, if you're ready, well, let's begin. How we learn the front roll is in three stages. The first stage, we learn it when we're in a kneeling position. Stage two is then when we do it from a squatting position. And then finally, stage three is when we do it from the actual standing position. Now, just before we start the actual um, process of learning the front roll, I just quickly want to explain something. The front roll is really broken down into like maybe three sections. And the first part is where we're actually moving forward. It's more like the push off. Then we roll and then finally we then land. So how I'm going to show you this is in um, sections. So we're going to start, yes, as we said, from the kneeling position. But the first part of the kneeling position is when we actually do the push off. So I'm going to show you that first. Once then we've done the push off, we go from the push off into the roll. And then finally, we go into the final section where we've pushed off, we've rolled, and then we land. So let's begin. The first part is the actual push off itself. And the easiest way to learn this is if you think about a sprinter. And what a sprinter does when they're starting a 100 meter race, they get into like a sprinting position. So we want to be crouched down. We've got our hands on the floor, shoulder widths apart. From there then, I'm getting into this sprinter position. My back foot is on the ball of the foot. My front foot is uh, flat on the floor. I'm squatting down. Now the other thing which is important is my back leg is not that long, it's close, like the sprinter for that push. So we're in that sprinting position and we're ready to push off. And when we're doing the front roll and how we're learning it, the first part is learning this push off. So we're going to push. So I'm going to, like a sprint, I'm pushing off, like so. So the first part, as I said, we're pushing off. We're pushing to get that momentum to go forward. So let's get into the position. My hands are shoulder widths. My front foot is flat on the floor. My back foot is on the ball of the foot, and it's close. It's not. If I don't, have, if I have it too far, I can't push off. It's the back foot which is pushing. Okay, I'm squatting down. And then I push off. Okay, so that's the most important part of it is a push off to get the momentum to go forward. So let's just try that a couple of times. From here, make sure foot is close and we've pushed off. We're pushing off from that back leg. And again, push. So the push comes from the actual back leg to give us some momentum to go forward. Now, the next part is when we go then into the actual roll itself. Now, as I mentioned before, if you can, if you can find a line on the floor where the mats join, whether if you're at home and you've got some mats on the floor, or whether it's in the dojang, you'll notice on the floor where the mats join, there's a line. So if you can have that, that is a good guide which we're going to be using. So the first part is our hands. So what I want to do, as I said, I'm kneeling down. I'm taking my front hand and I'm putting it, OK, is I'm putting it so my hand is facing towards me, okay? Because what is going to happen here is that when I roll, 
my hand goes down. So it comes down first, the hand comes down, then the elbow comes down, and then the shoulder comes down. And we're going to be coming down on this straight line. So, palm is, my hand is facing, as you see, towards me. I'm going to get into this squatting position. My other hand is just supporting me at the moment in time. And we'll come back to that later on. And all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to push off. I'm going to then put my elbow down, my shoulder down. At the same time, I'm tucking my head in. I'm tucking my head in so my chin is on my chest. So let's try that. We're going to go down and just roll. Now, at the beginning, it doesn't matter where you end up. We're not concentr We're not worried about that at the moment. We're not worried about what happens to the other hand. All I'm interested in at the moment is that I want to get it so my hand, my elbow, my shoulder touch the floor in that straight line at the beginning. All right, so let's try again. So we get into that squatting position like a sprinter. My hand is important, as I said, my hand is facing towards me. And I'm gonna then get up and I'm pushing off. I'm just pushing off, I'm tucking my head in. So I'm tucking my head in onto my chest and I'm pushing off like so. As I said, don't worry about anything else at the moment. So as you see, as I'm going down, my hand is back, my palm is on the floor, I hit with my elbow, then I go into my shoulder, then it goes across from my shoulder down. So it creates a line from the top of my shoulder coming down to the bottom here. Let's try that one more time. So we get into that squatting position. Hand is facing me and I'm just tucking my head in and push off like so. Now we want to do, we want to practice that many times to get comfortable with the actual movement of the actual hand, elbow, shoulder. So let's just do that again. And a practice. Pushing off. So you just do that as many times as you can until you become comfortable with the actual movement of the hand itself. Now, the next part is we've rolled, we've pushed off, is when we go into the actual finishing at this point of the actual fall itself. And this is where then you need to understand how we did some very basic falls in the previous videos, which there was a link in the description below. Because this is where that comes into effect. We now need to go into the landing of the actual side fall. Let me show you. So we get into that squatting position. We're putting a hand facing towards me. I'm going to push up. As I push off, I'm tucking my chin in. The other thing which I'm going to do this time is we're going to land. So I'm tucking it in. Now I've come over, I've landed, okay? What is happening here is when I land, I'm landing in that side fall position, like so, where I've got my, my left leg is up, my right leg is flat on the floor on the side. I'm landing on this side of the actual foot itself. I'm hitting, as I'm landing, I'm hitting with my palm and all my arm goes down at the foot. That's 90, it's like a 45 degree angle. And my rolling hand comes onto the belt. Let's try this again. We're going to push off, we're going to roll. When we land, we land in that side fall position. So we get into the squat position first. 
my hand on the floor, I'm going to push off. As I'm pushing off, the hand which is on the floor here, as it pushes off, it comes in like a crescent circle and it actually comes onto the belt when we land and my right hand comes down and hits on the floor. So let's do it slowly. So I'm pushing off, I'm pushing off, but my hand is coming through and finishing and landing on the belt where the belt knot is. My side hand, my right hand is coming down and landing flat on the floor. I'm hitting with my palm, my forearm, all coming down at the same time at like a 45 degree angle. My left leg is up and my right leg I'm hitting with the side. So all this side here I'm landing with like so. And we'll do that one more time. We in the squatting position, we push off. We're rolling and then we land. Like so. Right, and do it one more time again. Like so. Now, what you want to do, you want to continue and keep practicing that to get comfortable with doing it from the actual, as you said, kneeling position to start with. All you're trying to do is get the mechanics of the actual roll itself. From the pushing off, to the rolling on the arm, from the wrist, elbow, shoulder, to then the landing where the hand, the one that you're rolling on, comes onto the belt and the other hand comes down to the side to get the fall and they've landed on the side of the leg and the other leg is actually bent. So you want to practice that many times. Once you're then comfortable with that, then we go into the next stage. And the next stage is when we're going to go to stage two, when we're doing it from the actual squatting position. So now let's go on and move to stage two. With stage two, what we're doing now, we're just going to go a little bit higher and we're doing exactly the same as we did in stage one with the push off, with the roll and the actual land. But all you're trying to do now is improve uh, your confidence to get a little bit higher up. Okay, so, because what you don't want to do ever is when you're learning this, Never just try to do the front roll from the standing position. You've got to do it in sections and stages to gradually build it up and build up your confidence, which is why we did uh, kneeling on the floor first. Now, uh, all we're going to be doing this time is the same as we did in the kneeling position, but this time we're just slightly higher. And I'm in the squatting position, and what I'm going to do, my hands are here. As I'm going to push forward, my hand is going to come and roll. It's coming like in a a crescent circle. So as I'm gonna come onto the floor, as it comes on the floor, it comes from here, it comes down, round. So when I'm going on the floor, I'm landing wrist, elbow, shoulder, and we're pushing off exactly the same. And we're landing exactly the same. So I'm pushing off, I'm coming over, my hand finishes on the belt, my hand goes to the side, my foot, leg, right leg hitting on the floor, my left leg up like so. And let's do that again. And you want to just keep practicing this and build you become comfortable with it. But even at the very beginning when you're learning, when you've gone from kneeling, even just come up a little bit. Even have your hand closer to the floor if you feel more comfortable. And gradually just build it up until you get to the point where you're in that squatting position. Like so. And it's before you just want to keep practicing and practicing until you are very comfortable with doing it from the squatting position. And just gradually build it up slowly. 
Now, the next part is when we then do it from the actual standing position. Now, with the standing position though, we actually finish in a slightly different position itself. Because what we want to do with the standing position, we want to roll, and then when we finish, we actually come back up to the standing position. We don't finish on the actual floor itself. Let me show you. And we come back up. And the difference is we have to do a slightly different variation with the actual leg itself. Now, there's a reason behind this, is when you're learning this, is you want to learn it with the actual straight leg, is what I just did then. So we're rolling, we've landed, we're landed on the straight leg, and then we're coming back up again. <coughs> Excuse me. And the reason for that is to get ourselves into a habit. Because if we learn this habit this way, is if unfortunately for whatever reason, someone maybe pushed you, and you pushed you and you fell forward, you would automatically be in a habit of when you land, you land with that leg flat on the floor, like this. So you'd land with the leg flat on the floor. In a lot of places, some people teach it where when you're rolling, you, ro you go forward, you roll, you roll with a bent leg to then come up. And that is the wrong way to learn it to start with. Because if I unfortunately was pushed and I got in a habit of learning this roll with a bent leg, then when I landed, I would land with that bent leg. And that would really hurt. Let me show you. And I would land with the leg bent like so. And if I landed like this, all my weight wouldn't be distributed if it was a straight foot like this. It would be all in a smaller concentrated area and it would hurt much more by landing like this. So when we're learning this, we want to learn it with a straight leg. And then yes, later on, once you're comfortable with it, as long as it is a habit to roll with a straight leg, you can then decide in the future whether you roll with a straight leg or a bent leg. But you have a choice and you've automatically conditioned yourself to roll with that straight leg, which makes it much easier for you if unfortunately, as I said, you do get pushed, someone pushed you, you've rolled, you flipped and landed. When you land, your leg would be out straight and it would be a much more comfortable landing for you than if you landed with your bent leg. So, let's try. What we want to do then is we want to land and all we're going to do when we're landing, we're landing with the straight leg and we're pushing back up off it when we actually land. So let's try that. So we're going to push off, we roll, we land and we're going to use our momentum and we push and our hand to push us up like so. So the leg is straight. I'm also helping using my hand to push myself back up. Let me try to do it again. <clears throat> now this time we'll do it and I'll um, slow the video down so you can actually see what actually happens. But then when we're rolling, we roll as we land. We land on the right leg where it's straight. I'm also then using my right hand to help push myself back up off the floor. We've just done that front roll with the straight leg. So we've pushed off, we've rolled, 
once we've rolled, we've then landed, we've landed with the flat of our leg, and then we're using our momentum to bring us back up with also utilizing our hand to push us off as well, to bring us back up into that standing position. And by doing that, as I said before, and getting into that habit, you will then uh, find it's much easier to use later on. You then have a choice later to then do it with the straight leg, or we can do it with the actual bent leg, which we'll show you um, just now. As before, we start just in the same position, the standing position, we're just going to push off, we're going to roll, and this time we're going to bend our leg to enable us to come back up. Now this time, um, with this front leg, when we're doing it with the um, flat of the leg, the straight leg, I need my hand to help push me back up. With this one, because we have the momentum going forward, it's the momentum of ourselves that will bring us back up. So as you see with this one, it's slightly different, whereby we're actually just bending the leg itself and we're landing to enable that momentum to take us forward to bring us back up. Now, it's for yourselves um, to decide which role you do uh, depends upon the situation that you find yourself in. If you find yourself that you've gone push forward and you need to land hard and flat, because you've taught yourself to land with that flat straight leg, then you can utilize that. If you find that you've been pushed forward and you want to roll and come back up, it is faster to do that with the actual bent leg. So you could utilize that and come back up quickly. So because you have the two different options, it's much more beneficial for you. And remember the most important thing is, is when you're learning this, you must learn it to start with, with the actual flat straight leg first, to get that into a, uh, a habit, into your muscle memory, um, so that you can have a better chance when you come to utilize and use it. And that is the front roll from the standing position. Below is a link in the bottom left hand corner or somewhere in the top right on the next video on self-defense and Hapkido techniques. So you can go and learn and practice them for yourselves. As always, until the next time, Yamsa Henida. Now, what I want to just quickly share with you is a little tip is when you're learning something like this, is it's always best to do it if you can do it in a straight line. And if you have mats on the floor, where the actual mats join, you'll actually see there's an actual line on the floor. So when you're practicing this, it is very good to actually use that line on the floor as a guide for you when you're rolling um, forward. So just bear that in mind. If you can find a line on the floor where the join of the mats are, use that and that will help you with this actual front roll.